Let's do a throwback here of Ayn Rand, the libertarian hero. This is her summing up her philosophy on economics and government. We would not give the government or the majority or any minority the right to take the life or the property of others. That was the original American system. When you say take the property of others, I imagine that you're talking now about taxes. Yes, I am. And you believe that there should be no right by the government to tax. You believe that there should be no such thing as welfare legislation, unemployment compensation, regulation during times of stress, certain kinds of rent controls and things like that. That's right. I'm opposed to all forms of control. I am for an absolute laissez-faire, free, unregulated economy. Let me put it briefly. I'm for the separation of state and economics. Just as we had separation of state and church, which led to peaceful coexistence among different religions after a period of religious wars, so the same applies to economics. If you separate the government from economics, if you do not regulate production and trade, you will have peaceful cooperation and harmony and justice among men. Agree to disagree. No, to me, that's an idea that is solely based in theory. Okay, see, that's the thing about libertarians. I agree with them on many things, probably about 40% of things. We're on board with the NSA spying. I think that's ridiculous. We're on board with foreign policy. Most of them are non-interventionists. I'm a committed non-interventionist. Uh, most of them are... Uh, against the drug war, and not only for the decriminalization of drugs, for the legalization of drugs. I'm on board with them on that. So there are many areas where we totally agree, but then there are areas like this, where <laughs> it's purely based on something that they thought out and argued in their head, but empirically, when you apply their ideas, it goes to shit. Okay, and they hate it when you bring this up, but it's the truth. You want to know what a libertarian system looks like? Look at Somalia. Somalia has no centralized government, and everybody has weapons too, and you have just warlord factions. Every, it's pure private property system, okay, but it's all warlord factions fighting each other. When there's no centralized government, you do lose organization and structure. That doesn't mean that government can't get too big. Of course it could get too big. But the answer is no government? I mean, that's... The problem is the absolutism. I mean, therein lies the religious absolutism of libertarianism, that the government never, ever, ever has the answer, and you need to totally separate a state from economics. I mean, think about that. She says no taxes. That's what I want, no taxes whatsoever. Okay, so then say bye-bye to bridges, roads, the army, cops, courts, the FDA, to make sure that your food doesn't give you E. coli or salmonella or some sort of toxic poisoning. Now, of course, they would respond to each and every one of these things. they say, well, roads, we'd have private roads. Yeah, we would, and they'd probably suck. And not only that, when you turn on to all different ones, you'd have to pay a toll every time you make a turn. Do you want to do that? You want, it, you want it to cost $17 for you to take a 10-minute ride because every street you turn on, uh, you have to pay for it. And also what happens when it snows, for example. Half the roads might not even plow them on time because they're privately owned, and then half the, way, the ways to get to work are fucked up. I mean, there are so many practical problems when you apply stuff like this. Uh, private bridges. People just wouldn't... I mean, look, they would find ways to get across, but... They wouldn't build good bridges that last a long time because there's no profit in making the bridges, and it wouldn't just be helping you, it would be helping everybody else. There are fundamental problems with this, and she would say privately fund the cops and the army and the FDA and stuff like that, or the courts. But, and the problem with that is, who is the army going to represent if it's only rich donors giving money to the army? They're only going to represent the rich! Uh, same thing with cops and courts. If it's only the rich funding it via voluntary donations, whenever there's a problem and the rich have some sort of dispute with the poor, they're always going to side with the rich because they fucking paid them. So many problems with this. Or how about, look, let's get into some other stuff here about regulation because she said separation of economy and state. Well, so that means there's no child labor laws. Because that's the government infringing upon the liberty of a business owner to freely talk to other people and make contracts. If it, ha if it happens to be a child, well, none of the government's business. They don't have the authority to step in and say no. No child labor laws, no minimum wage, that's long gone. No safety regulations. 
So let me give you a few real world examples here where their ideology fails. How about when GE uh, notoriously and infamously dumped toxic waste into the Hudson River because it was cheaper to dispose of it in the Hudson River. So what ended up happening? Government regulators needed to step in and say, hey asshole, now we're gonna fine you and you better find a way to dispose of this stuff safely or else we're gonna put your ass out of business. Without the government doing that, they just would have kept dumping it into the river. In China, where there's no regulation, which is ironic because it's supposedly a communist state, even though it's really the most capitalist place in the world, uh, you can literally r light rivers on fire from the pollution because there's no regulators that say you can't dump that toxic shit into the river here. I mean, this is insane stuff that we're talking about here. How about uh, China's another good example from China? They recently, there was this big scandal where they were mixing in with other kinds of meat that they were selling. Rat meat. Now, again, the government isn't overseeing, isn't regulating. It takes the government to step in and go, hey, if you do that, we're going to put you out of business. Hey, if you do that, we're going to find your punk ass. You're not allowed to do that. Now, some libertarians would fire back and say, well, no, we're against that because that's fraud. They're saying they're selling something else and it's not actually something else. But, in many cases... The product maybe was 60% the meat that the person thought it was and 40% rat meat. At what point is it fraud versus at what point or is it just a product that's not high quality, right? You need regulations in order to sort these things out. Uh, how about Glass-Steagall is another great example. Glass-Steagall was a, a regulation, a rule on the books in the U.S. after the Great Depression. It was repealed later on, and it was a big mistake when we did that. It's one of the main reasons why the Great Recession happened. But Glass-Steagall basically said that you need to separate investment banking from commercial banking. So in other words, when you go to the local bank and you put your money in there, you're doing that with the idea in mind that there's trust and the bank is not going to gamble in this insane casino capitalist way uh, where they just are going to blow your money and it's an incredibly risky bet. You're putting your money in the bank thinking, well, if they, if they invest, it's going to be very moderate investments, safe investments, where there's a return on investment. So the bank doesn't go belly up and I don't lose all my money. Well, when there was no regulation, the bank, the commercial banks would take that money and turn it right over to the investment banks who they had deals with. And the investment banks would bet on all types of insane crazy derivatives bets and everything would go pop at some point the bubble would burst and all the money would go bye-bye and you just lost all your money when you thought you were putting it in a safe place so Glass-Steagall said sorry commercial banks you can't take that money and give it to investment banks there's a firewall between the two and that that was gotten rid of at one point and of course that led to massive problems but that's a good regulation that protects people's money when they have an expectation that it should be protected or I mean if there's a pure libertarian economy, no regulation, then there can be snake oil salesmen giving their medical cures. And again, they, libertarians will say, well, that's fraud. We're against that. But you got to understand there are so many uh, supplements that are in a gray area where it's like, well, they don't really work, but... It, there's the placebo effect which comes into it, so maybe it works in that respect, so we should be able to keep selling it for that reason, and there's this one backward study that we funded that says it maybe works even though it doesn't, and maybe we should still be allowed to sell it. So you have, if you have no regulation of these things, of course there's going to be so many people selling fake cures, and people are going to die as a result of it. Now the other argument they'll give you is, it's okay, the market will sort it out. Over time people will realize this company is full of shit, and they'll stop buying it. And guess what? That one is true. But what's the thing that they're missing? How many people are going to die in the process in the middle? So what, if it takes three years for it to go out of business, you're cool with that? Like, yeah, it's okay. Bob died, but it's all right, because uh, Terry died next, but that's okay, because eventually by the time it gets to Janice, Janice is going to be okay and the place will be out of business. Why not nip it in the bud when you know they're doing something fucked up and do it via regulation? And the final example I'll give, um, the sale of honey proves that the libertarian idea of economics is ridiculous because more than a third of honey that's consumed in the U.S. is smuggled in from China and it's tainted with illegal antibiotics and heavy metals and it gets people sick but it does over time. It's not like the second you eat it you get sick. It builds up over time and you get sick later on. So there's the perfect example of they could just get away with it because people can't make the connection. They don't know that it's the honey making them sick because it takes a while. So they can keep selling it and continue to make money because all they care about is money because they're a company that's all they give a fuck about. That's all they're designed to give a fuck about. And it, people will get sick. 
So how, how did we resolve this? Regulation! You have... They came up with a way to measure the amount of illegal antibiotics and heavy metals in the honey, and then they can weed out the bad stuff and only sell the good stuff, and people's lives are saved as a result of it because of efficient regulation. The idea that it's an all-or-nothing, black-or-white thing, either you're for regulation or you're against it, total and utter bullshit. Sometimes the answer is capitalism and the profit motive, and other times the answer is regulation and socialism. That's the nuanced world that we live in.